So today we're going to have Mark from yeah, and he's going to tell us about orientation order in the Close, close. Okay. Thanks very much to everyone who's organized this program. It's been a lot of fun. We're not going to stay for this week. So, um, this talk will be sort of in two parts. So, this part of the talk about the appearance of an orientation order in a real development system. And then the second part, so I'm trying to put some extra checks on the idea that cell division is driving cell division and activity. Driving of you know, this kind of order for the sun and the perfect time for the next week and the student. So, uh, yeah, so that's the uh, UCSB campus. AITP is this corner of the campus here. And uh, I'm visiting the campus sailing. That's not my way. That's an RP69 foot project. I was looking earlier. Not even going forward on the No. No. Uh, not here. Yeah, let's just try. So, should I stop screen sharing yeah. and stop share? And then, so, well, okay. But nice. Let's try. Put it share away. So, here's room, yeah. Yeah. Share desktop instead. Yeah, share the whole thing. Yeah, so share. Share screen. And just that stop is the whole thing that usually. Well, that's what I, that's what I had. Let's just try it again. Just sometimes it's a, uh, you know, play it again. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. So um, this was uh, this is based on some beautiful um, thesis work of a student, Bill and Sisler, who was a student. Laura Schleiman here and Sebastian Strike on the USB and Sebastian uh, is the department at UCSB and works on um, biological physics problems. And they, this is a paper that published in Nature Physics this year. And I got involved because um, they saw some beautiful kind of looking like square lattice order developing in the system, which is a very simple kind of strong Mahayali audiences. And um, and the question was, well, you know, what could this sort of order be? It looks very regular, it looks like the lattice, but the eye is very poor seeing positional order, very good at seeing orientation order. Maybe this is some, this is some evolutionary result. But uh, what we did was to study the development of this kind of pattern. So um, for some background, and here you can see cells dividing and reorienting as they divide. So for some background, I want to discuss where our orientational symmetry comes from and where it might fit in um, biological systems. So if we look at patterns that go from very disordered systems, to the, and develop an order by breaking symmetries, we have fluids which break all the symmetries of the system. Uh, and those are you know, too fragile for most problems of interest. Now, uh, if we go all the way to a crystal, which breaks both translational symmetries and orientational symmetries, we really have too much rigidity. We wouldn't be able to develop much structure um, from, a, from a crystalline system, basically the dead system. Um, but this possibility, which is in between, I call um, structured fluid, where you can have some kind of rigidity, but also the flexibility of a fluid. 
Uh, I mean, some kind of stiffness. Here it's going to be stiffness change in the orientation. So, um, I guess it's the of life mentioned before the great decision. Okay. Sorry, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it depends on what, what kind of world you're talking about, but yes. I'm not saying this is the only possible thing, but this is an interesting line with a, with a simple kind of given. So, um, Orientational systems, we're quite uh, familiar with development of orientational systems and liquid crystals. Um, but there you have a, an analyzer problem building. I'll be interested in systems that you develop uh, that, that orientation order without a built in building block that has uh, that and they kind of emerge from the uh, from the ordering itself. Now, um, in three dimensions, uh, orientational symmetries and translational symmetries are quite tightly connected. If you think about a system that fluid like but has some orientational order, I imagine that the order is sort of like this, the same direction is correlated with the out. Um, but your translation in disorder in 3D, you go around and you look at the orientation for more possible equivalent position in space, and that will tend to destroy the orientational order. 2D, however, is an exception. It's possible to independently break the rotational symmetries and translational symmetries. We can have a system that's orientationally ordered. But translation of this. These are the uh, kind of systems that I've been um, talking about. So these are generally for um, theatric systems where the, the orientation of order the discrete symmetry, which has some people, so one that most common are with the six, which is exactly. And for the Sushuk system, we will be looking at the case with the four, four, four. So what, what is uh, such a phase? What characterizes it? There's an order, local order parameter, which is just some of the peak groups of unity at a position X, where I day is a bomb uh, or, or, or a direction that connects site I to site J and site I and site J with respect to some axis. The order parameters themselves are not going to be sufficient. What's crucial is to look at correlation functions, the two point correlation functions in space associated with this order parameter. And for a translation, the corresponding thing will be the density, density approach. So, uh, what's possible in 2D, and this is uh, the 2D theory of melting, is Two independent BKT like transitions. First one, and I'll be mostly discussing things in this order because typically in development the system starting out, something that's very fluid, and then it's ordering in some way. But the fluid, as you said, is uh, disordered with respect to both orientation and translation. And this comes about because it's in the, what would be the vortex unbound phase or a possible status transition. And the role of vortices there are played by disclinations. I'll show you what they are in a minute. But um, these are points that are not the normal. Yeah, I'm just going to order of the system. So these are points in the system that are not six-fold coordinate, the elementary ones being five-fold or seven-fold. So I'll call that uh, a B plus and a B minus. It's one kind of coordinates. So as these find in the ordered phase of this first term, you have a phase that has bound disclinations. So they're in pairs, five, seven, B plus, B minus, tightly bound. Now, it turns out I'll show you this in a minute, but most of you know it, that this itself is a different kind of topological defect in 
topics done associated with the translational order or preserving orientation order. And that itself can unbind in the second transition, or bind, I should say, into dislocation, anti dislocation pairs, tightly bound, which give you a crystalline state. Now, how do these uh, symmetry versions take place due to these defects? Now, uh, let's look first at the case of disclinations. So, if we had a five fold coordinate point like the pentagon in a background lattice that's all six fold coordinated, and we imagine that we go in some circuit around this disclination, and we look at tangent vectors to the, to the circuit. So we think we're in a we think we're in a uniform lattice. We will be turning uh, 60 degrees at each step, but there'll be a mismatch with the bifold coordinate point because this angle is 72 degrees. So there'll be a 12 degree mismatch, and you go around another 12, another 12, another 12, another 12. Eventually you'll come back, looks like you'll come back rotated by 60 degrees with respect to your starting tangent. So this means that yes. We have to just integrate the bond then. Yeah, that'll give you some non zero energy multiple. So yeah, one or minus one effect to the other. Right. Um, so what that means is you don't basically know whether you're oriented this way or this way. The frustration with respect to orientation. So if you have a guess of these disclinations, you will destroy the or any orientation order in the system. But this is the, the fluid case. If you bind these together, then uh, you will not disrupt that rotational symmetry or orientation order. But you will get uh, you will get um, this kind of defect. So this is called a dislocation, and this is a picture from some old work I did with uh, William Levin, where we were looking at interstitials and spherical colloidal systems. This is actually flat, real experimental data of a colloidal lattice and it has a dislocation here. So what a dislocation is is a freely terminating braid row. You see this red one here goes along and at this point here it terminates. So three rows here will go into two rows here or in general n rows will go into n rows. And the difference between those two topological defect with some torus uh, and because of the symmetries of triangular lattices, you'll see we have always have two when you have uh, triangular symmetry. So two dislocation, terminating, two this, uh, freely terminating braid rows, terminating at this dislocation. By the way, if you want to see these things on your uh, screen, the best way is to look in the plane of the screen to turn up the monitor, look into it, and you'll see the bifurcation of Craig rows, three going into two, two going into one. So, anyway. um, so here, if I take a path up here in the uniform part of the lattice, and I take six steps around, I will close, come back to the same lattice point. If I do the same thing around the dislocation going here, I come back displaced by a lattice test. So now that means that I don't know really whether I'm sitting here or here. So a gas of those kinds of defects will destroy the translational order. So if I go the other way uh, from a crystal, to the ecstatic, an unbinding dislocation dipoles into pre dislocations, the gas of dislocations, that's destroying the translational order. But because it's a tightly bound 5 7, 
that doesn't have a net discrimination chart. So it preserves the orientation of. And then in turn, these can unbind um, to the fluid. And you notice here that this um, the lattice displacement, so called Burgess data, is orthogonal to the five seven. That's what dislocation looks like in the square ladder. We'll be talking about square ladders. So here is the you know, pre terminating brain rub. And you can rewrite this in terms of a uh, bound five, three here. So that is the discrimination corresponding to seven, five for square ladders. Now, uh, how does this manifest it in terms of correlation functions? I guess we're always coming up to right angles. Distribution lines. No. I mean, oh, for the square ladders. Yes. Yeah. But for the square ladders, you have, you have a single freely terminated dislocation line. You don't have the symmetry that we impose the second one like the triangle of this. Step one. Slide. Going there, well, here, I mean, you have another one over here, same direction. Anywhere, any of these. If you cut, if you cut it across, so here, if you go on um, on this side, you cross three. On that side, you cross two. So that difference of one to be that you know, gas, and you can do the same thing going this way. Here, there's nothing. The same number of hours uh, on each side going this way. It's just one. It doesn't, doesn't have to be. So, how does this uh, manifest itself in terms of correlation? It's trying to give you a big point here. In the liquid, you have short range correlation functions for both positional order and orientation order. So, these are both the code of exponential. In the exact phase, you have Short range translation order, and there's a translation disorder. Now, the order for orientation, since it's a two dimensional system, you cannot have true, cannot have true long range order. You have algebraic effects, quasi long range. So, this C6 here will decay as some power law. You go all the way to the crystal. Then you can have quasi long range translational order in this two dimensional system. We don't have true long range order. Well. Although the orientational correlation function is truly long range. So if you want to actually prove something as a crystal, this is the best way. This gives you a true order plane. So let's now uh, go back to the system that I studied in the, um, by doing so in the, in the strike hand lab. This is a system that's known as a direct developer. So it's like a homunculus. So you see at the beginning, what you get at the end just click. And uh, it's uh, known as a Swiss Army knife, Swiss Army knife of. Uh, of Biological systems, but it has 17 different appendages from these feelers here, legs, and in various parts of the body going down to here that are used for feeding, for walking, for sensing, for sex, for everything. And it's laid out on some kind of rectangular body plan. And you know, the question is how this can develop from, from a single cell. Yeah. Yeah. There's no larval stage or anything like this. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, the cell division rate is a bit of slower. Covering one is like 10 hours. So it's also uh, somewhat advantageous in studying this. Uh, so, how can you reliably generate complex shapes in the far from primitive animal equilibrium? That is the question that I would like to study. You need uh, these appendages 
be arranged, you know, in the correct place. You don't want your arm up here where your head is. You don't want the, this uh, this hand to be oriented the wrong way to be, but this hand and so on. All that has to come out in the development process. Here's one of them, Newton. You, know, you get this uh, floor with antennas. So you need some kind of a plan, segmented body plan that will serve as a template for generating this kind of structure. And uh, the, the local development of programs in these systems unfold sequentially in, in segments like this. This is the head and this is the tail. And you'll see a set of certain set of rows of cells small number like five, six, seven, that end up associated with each of the different appendages, at least 17 appendages. There's more developed here, less developed. So we're just looking at the early stages where this developed before the um, structure. Yes, yes, oxygen. Oxygen. Very well said. Uh, so this is what the images look like. This structure across multiple scales here. Here's the head tail axis. This is the ventral dorsal axis, so stomach back axis. And here's the kind of patterns of cells that you see there, uh, whose order we'd like to analyze. So um, this is, is this flat in any way, or it's it's curved, but not highly curved. Uh, it will be mapped on. So, 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 so the sorry, so, so basically the curvature goes much, is the curvature curvature is much larger than the separation between the two. It's, it's slightly okay. Yeah. But at this stage, it's the ectoderm and purely two Yeah. Yeah. So, to only two D layer cells. Yeah. Not from a lot of development in terms of structure. Uh, so, this is the uh, image with light sheet microscopy. So, this is the actual uh, light sheet microscope in the strike point we have. I want to look at it. Uh, light sheet microscopy is pretty cool because the laser is, comes in at right angles to the axis of which you image it, and it's focused just in one direction. So, it was cheap like that. And she cut into the sample so you can get 2D data and scan pretty quickly rather than point scanning. That's the point. That's familiar, yes. But this is that's in the way. Where you really lose some of your brains. <laughs> Uh, so here's uh, these cells moving around as the system orders. You see uh, a disordered posterior end, and this the ectoderm looks fairly ordered, but that's what we want to analyze. And normally you expect that the cell division is going to completely fluidize things. And the question is whether, whether there's anything remaining. Uh, but it turns out that this, you know, I'll show you the analysis, that fourfold orientation order is established and maintained. So the data is analyzed about um, three days after egg laying or for another 70 or so hours. And again, if you look at this, it looks like a nice uh, square layer. Uh, here's just some of the imaging showing the anterior posterior axis, the sort of hair development here, and it extends eventually to the whole and it's been tied extend. So how could it be sit here? It's still pretty much this still pretty black here because it's pretty flat. Yeah, it's uh, quite amenable to tissue back up. Informing that with the orientations. But that's something you can, you can check. 
the order is uh, lowest along this uh, ventral midline here. Oh, actually. And, and it's highest in the, the back of the midline here. It's close. South African view of the whole thing. So here is a mapping, informally mapped, the Voronoi tessellation of the system. And this is what we analyze for order parameters and correlation functions. So the fourfold orientational correlation function is uh, what I showed you before with the e to the four i theta. So you can play around with weighting of edges here. So the one that I built and eventually chose was this one, but the results are not that simple. So this avoids weight and very, very short edges. Yeah. Um, no, it will, but it's a little, little trickier um, triangulating with the pot. Um, the world of infants, huh? the quality is the only process. If I would say the size of the property, you know, in me. Yeah, it's just based on a mechanical cell. From this one here, you're getting paid right there. So if you have something that uh, you might that has the six fold order like this, the side four will be zero. It's going to be square. Uh, it's going to be side four going to be perfect. One if it's uniform like that. Uh, so again, that, that's the same kind of thing. Uh, this is this shows an image where side four is very small, so the orientation is pretty disordered. And here, the side four is quite large, 0.66. And you can see this orientation is quite far away from these points. So, how will it This shows a perfect four-fold order. So uh, here is the development of this so-called border. So here's the, as I said, after a few days of eagling, then you start measuring this border. Here it grows from zero at the beginning to around 0.5 up to 30 hours. It's quite a complicated sequence of processes by which this um, order develops by forming first Precursor row that forms what's called a parasegment, and then that dividing and so on. This process not very well understood. And here uh, uh, the correlation functions. We see this is the beginning. This is at 19 hours. It's very low, and then by 30 hours. This shows so it's excellent. It came to zero. By 30 hours, you see a power law like behavior, an exponent one quarter over about okay, one and a half kilograms, over basically um, the largest over the scale of most of it. Same thing here that shows uh, these. Rose developing when it first developed the order is zero basically it's not order and then that you divide and extend this order developments. Here 
16 hours cycle down in color here and then it's growing higher here in this yellow rays. So um, this uh, kind of order um, it's in equilibrium systems is very, very finely tuned. Uh, if you, for example, look at um, point light particles of the Leonard Jones sort of interactions, like the early studies in the 70s of the Anderson, Tom Frick and Anderson, the chemist, Stanford, and Swap. Uh, well, this one is started in the 70s, but this is 96. The, they did find this exact phase that occurs in a window with 1% density space, so density between 1 and 1.01. 1 .01. So, you know, it is a very subtle phase. Now, um, interestingly enough, in these, the way they found our engagement the system was to use as kind of a bi-canonical ensemble. They would do Monte Carlo simulation of n particles, and then look at n plus 1, and then back again. And this gave you much better data for extracting correlation <clears throat> functions. And what I want to suggest here is that cell division is doing this automatically. It's changing the number of particles. And, uh, and this generates, when you, when you add a particle, you know, if you want to move around the space of all triangulation, and you have two standard modes or pattern modes. You have the flip on flip standard one T1. The second one is a node insertion T2. So that enables you to, to want more efficiently move around uh, in the space of triangulations. Both are independently or ergodic in the space of triangulations, but it, but um, it's uh, efficient, I would say. To have these node insertion like moves and being done automatically when you have cell division. And you can study this in um, colloidal systems and other systems, inserting a node as an interstitial. You put an interstitial into a 2D uh, ordered system, what you'll generate, and this is actual data again from uh, what I did with William Irwin, you put an interstitial here, which you can do with laser tweezers, uh, it will automatically morph, very soon morph, into a complex of dislocations. An interstitial itself has zero further effect. It's not a problem. Effect. So the complex of dislocations that we generate has to have vanishing further effect. But nevertheless, it's a dynamical complex of defects, which can which interact with power light charges, a dynamic, a motile, to move around and stir up the system. There's a dipole, here is you know, a hexapole, uh, three dislocations down, and so on. Now, if you add to this, you know, if you keep doing this, you're going to have you moving around, exploring the sort of landscape of possible states that you can find. And what I'd like to suggest is that this is a good way to find is rather subtle on phases. So you get correlations and divisions as well. Like you get like bunch of divisions at the same place, for example. Is that does that have would that presumably you can play with that to, to optimize the you know, your search in, in, in space. Yeah, I don't I, I, that hasn't been done uh, numerically. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the the high alley system does do a fairly complex um Two waves of divisions that are displaced but synchronized. Uh, it will be it will be it will be good to to employ something like this to get me yeah. 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 You were talking about the 
Yeah, more than usual. That's true. If you try to do it with potentials, then you need a second minimum of square root of two, and it's again finely tuned. Yeah. So uh, I don't know why the system picks for that. Could be two edges shrink down, you know, some tensions, which are far studying a lot. Um, but the origin of Y4 and mm -hmm. six. No. So, so these are actual cells, right? This yeah. Is not a so there are actual membranes. Yes. 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 And which is all different from the process. Yeah. It makes more something that's right. So the um, way I think it's to be. Uh, yeah, not unless, right, not unless you put in sort of fourfold yeah. structure at the beginning, yeah, which is what I like about it, but it doesn't mean they're runs. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty remarkable. That's why it's really Unfortunately, here in the, there's, there are only nuclear markers of the centroids. There are no actual actomyosin or actomyosin markers or anything like that, or even membrane markers. Yeah, you know, it's a question of how. Yeah. Right here. Okay, that's when it first formed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't know for sure, but the first precursor row may form at that disordered junction. But I think it's probably at the front. Yes. So, it's recruited from here and propagates in the front the other way. <laughs> but it seems always the bottom of embryo. You know, bottom of the root. I have to the bottom of the root. Disordered and then they. There's a way to do it. Yeah. Yes, well, it's recruiting from the posterior, but then that induces division, and that makes the pump that actually propagates the other way because it's more you know, the The ectoderm, the, the, sort, the ordered part, which is not orientation in order, yeah, still has, it has structure. So you're recruiting from a completely you know, not bad. You know. Here, you know, you're recruiting from here. This, this is already ordered, but not orientation. You recruit from here, and somehow the beginning one row is picked out as first row. It may be like the myosin. I don't know. Nobody knows here the system. But then that induces divisions. Orthogonally to that row, and then that that induces the orientation of the brain, which develops because this is already more ordered this way. So, so you that's nuclear. Yeah, yeah, nuclear mark. So what I've seen that mm -hmm. this place where you've got this thing, the nuclear moids, they're, they're, they're sort of a little bit more anisotropic. Or I'm like that's just an article about the view. They seem to be more anisotropic. This slide, yeah, this is the thing. Um, well, not really. Okay, so they just to summarize this part, this so fourfold order is uncovered in this growing phytalic embryo. Here's here's a square letter, it's Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> it's made of squares, but it was not uh, but yes, yeah, so a very unusual ordering, and uh, this is how it may you know develop from uh, divisions. So 
Uh, to um, test this idea that uh, activity in some form plus divisions are important. Uh, I've uh, been working with uh, Max here and his very good student, Yuen Kang, and then a UCSB undergraduate who went for a year to Oxford and now down to graduate school at NYU. And the idea here was to study, now we'll be looking at six fold over that. But the idea is to study a self propelled Barnoid model. So, this is a standard area perimeter um, vertex slave model, Barnoid in this case, with two important um, elements. So, it's going to be activity in the form of self propulsion, and there's going to be cell division. So the cell division, if you want, is the, is the new part. Uh, this total number of cells is going to be conserved. So in cell division, you'll kill off and in this new cell somewhere else. And the interesting thing that we find is, so without cell division, it's known that there is a hexatic phase in the system for a range of self-propelled uh, velocities, V0, here in this range like 0.35 to 0.45, right? but the low mobility Phase is crystal. So you have standard crystal exactly liquid like phase diagram. When we introduce cell division, this crystalline phase seems to be unstable. So what you get is uh, a hexatic phase, more broader, and you get liquid liquid on each side. So it does you know, increase it. Some fixed division rate increase um, mobility. You go from liquid to exatic to liquid. But uh, the key thing here is that uh, you still have this exatic phase and you also destabilize the. So this is um, some kind of evidence. Um, that cell division playing an important role here. Here are the correlation functions at some fixed, relatively small division rate. Uh, and as you vary uh, the mobility here, then you can see a nice power law decay, which at liquid exatic transition fits the standard experiment. Uh, here are some the correlation function is you know, how law in this range. This is the better domain in this system. And outside there, the translational correlation function decays exponentially on both sides. And here are susceptibilities. So this. Uh, one susceptibility that you already have without cell division, that's the liquid exatic one. But this one here only occurs with cell division. That's the second liquid exatic transition. We can look at structure factors. So you have a person and a 12 fold symmetry of the exatic phase. So the kind of state diagram that we get here uh, is, well, it's not a more fine one in a minute, but um, has this pretty large exotic region. So um, if you go to very, so you can think of, if you go to very high cell division rate, it's going to be liquid or very high motility, it's going to be liquid. But if you go down here, lower division rate, when you go up this way, it's increased mobility. You go to this liquid, liquid point. When you go down to very low mobilities, the cell division becomes a dominant thing. That is the idea. So it stays with. What was one? Well, the, the cell division rate down the of the cell. Division. Here's what uh, the pattern of defects looks like. So here is the, the exotic phase in the middle, and you see a beautiful 
gas of three dislocations. This is what you expect from static gas. High temperatures, these unbind to disformation and this, not, uh, so it's higher mobility. Lower one is the most. You can see uh, in this exact phase, the pre disclamations are uh, dropping right down and non zero density of the solution. You can also make a very simple kind of um, mean field description of the defect dynamics in the tissue where you just have a small cluster of cells and have you know, no defects, dislocation, disclamation. And you look at transition, then you add to that um, some cell division, which is unbind. And you have and play with these energy barriers driven by, by division and so on, and get a phase diagram which um, pretty closely uh, matches what is seen in the simulation. Very, very low division rate you can get. This one. So um, that is the, uh, the conclusion. We get here a liquid exotic and exotic liquid reentrant transition that's known in some other distorted system. And it emerges from the interplay of the cell division and cell motility. So the system has two kinds of noise, if you want, that generated by activity, active forces, things going on in the above. And that generated by cell division. And these seem to work uh, together to allow you the system to find you know, what can be local minima in the complex energy landscape. So I think that's a that's an interesting uh, mechanism uh, to if you want basically broaden the region of parameter space uh, but by going to these non-equilibrium processes for seeing. Subtle quasi long range orientation of the space. And you can write some things in the field for this. And uh, it would be interesting to, to see um, whether this is a mechanism that makes significant role in public development problems. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this that's the mechanism I was trying to explain. Thank you. Um, uh, that might be a little bit. Misleading because it's sort of standard about, but um, the way I think about it, both processes are stirring up the system. So, you know, maybe you have a complex energy landscape and the orientation in order to is over here somewhere. You've yeah. got to find it. Now, you have two ways you can stir the system with mobility, doing certain things, and then cell division. Every time you get stuck, you're making you go and you know, you make two. Cells out of one. It's pretty much like going on. This is stirring, stirring the system. So it's getting kicked around a lot. Once you make those complexes of defects, they're dynamically roaming through the system because they're interacting and they're mobile particles and so on. So it's uh, you, have, you have these two sources of noise. Mm -hmm. And you you change the number of particles. Yes, yes. So I, I guess that can sort of explain how it works. If you look at our images, we make something that is sort of well packed as sort of almost exact order, right? Because it, it comes from several different cycles. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, you're not throwing all it at once randomly and then sorting yourself out. You're you generate it in the step step order. It's, it's right. Um, Bosophila um, grows is much faster division rate. So it would be interesting if we could do these uh, simulations, allowing the number of particles to just grow 
Yes. So the, the Pahayale also does that in the second stage, it does convergent extension uh, with areas mostly fixed and it's still dividing. So that's the stage in which it packs more. The first stage uh, is being done at uh, basically uh, constant. So it's two phases. Square the other thing that's set the body plan. Yes, yeah. right. Maybe that with angular group. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's in a much smaller thing as you see that uh, C squares, uh, they, but they, there is only up to a stage where they have 16 cells or something. Mm -hmm. and they are arranged as spread mm -hmm. But these are the very stereotyped. So each cell has its own genetic identity and so on. Yeah. Okay. There are probably yeah. some achievements between cells. Each cell is different. So it's here, they're all sort of themselves. But is the is it is translation law to be examined? I guess it's so small that yeah. it's hard to. <laughs> I mean, you could barely touch the inclination. Yeah, it's like sixteen cells, but it's four by four. Yeah, you can put anything to it. Yeah. <laughs> Three hours after so this study was kind of like it starts three hours after the event or another or another study. Yeah. 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 I think it's equivalent to the, the successful type. This is very simple. It was sort of a naive question. Going back to the um, the fourth wall symmetry. Um, so, is it? Did, did you guys think about trying you know, simple, some simple anastropic model or whatever? It's just soft anastropic models to see whether or not you can get things to get. But, uh, no, 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 no. And would this be any particular reason why? It's hard or what? You said it there. No, no. no. Well, 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 I mean, I, I, I'm playing with playing with just like that. So it's a thing of squarish, squarish particle or something like that. Well, oh, if you put in square particles, then it's sort of get it for free. But I, yeah. what, I think the way to get this is if you stabilize four fold vertices in. Um, in the clearance structure, right? And there are proteins that localize typically to four fold vertices. Yeah. Yeah. It's not clear that the four fold junctions are totally stable, right? They could still be all three fold vertices. It's just you got some edges that are very short. Yeah, short. Yeah. Short. And they probably alternate between the two possible configurations. So effectively, we're stabilizing at least in the vicinity of the point. So if, if, if you want to get square shapes in, in these vertex type of model, you can basically give it a preference for having a large length. So that essentially, so, you know, like, like you get a hexagon because when things yeah. behave like particles, they prefer to minimize their surface. But if they prefer to maximize the surface, square is the way to go. Oh, but great junction, right? Otherwise, you're Yeah, if you don't allow it, 
we will never get ordered. They will never line up. So then you need uh, the polarities on the at, at a multicellular scale to line them up and you know put them in rows and columns. Right? Yeah, so, but so but you have to basically say you have to tweak the bits more than five bits. So you have to go to, so if you have a really large preferred uh, line, uh, lines perimeter, right? That that gives you square ish shapes, mm -hmm. but they're totally disordered. You know? mm -hmm. And then you have to, you know, there has to be some signaling. So they're they're still hexagon. They're just they're just six sided object with two very short sides. with two very short sides. Yeah. Kind of. But but okay, but I can't think of what's the physical end of giving that. Maybe large adhesion. Right. Yeah. No. I think yeah. You need something. Extra than single cell. Yeah, I mean, there are proteins that just to take to form from the You will rule out that there is a two fold order on top of it. Uh, good question. Yeah, you yeah. can yeah. think about it. Yeah, that's a good point. No, but one of them. But it's two people. Yeah, yeah, but they're different. They have to be Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any kind of phase is automatic. It has a tiny magic. Um, the okay. Okay. If there's any more questions, comments, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.